So I suppose the biggest thing with the Raptor suspension that we're all trying to get around right now is not affecting the live valve inside the shocks and the internal bypass ports. One, you shouldn't put spaces in any vehicle. If you understand suspension, spaces can cause so much more drama. So please do not put spaces, especially in a Ranger Raptor, do not do that. Um, yes, you can do a spring upgrade, things like that, but again, you're gonna affect the ride and the handling of the Raptor itself. These things are designed to go fast, they're designed to jump, they're not designed to carry big heavy loads, they're not designed to tow big caravans, and that's why you can get the ability out of this truck versus just a standard Ranger. The biggest hurdle we're trying to get around, like I said, is the suspension and trying to lift these so they just look a bit better. As you know, the Ranger Raptor sits a little bit nose down. Mine, ha mine was dead level when I picked it up, pretty much, but the front has squatted down a bit. Over time, it's got about 9,000 Ks on it now, so it does start to settle. The front springs will settle a little bit. So I just want to bring that back up. CTP have reached out to me. They're a performance company in New Zealand. And this is what we're gonna to fit today. So this is a perch kit. This isn't a spacer, this doesn't go on top of the strut. This is a perch kit that's gonna go below the spring. I'm gonna give this a go first before I try anything else. This suspension is very technical. It is very advanced and simply putting spaces or springs or anything like that isn't gonna solve the issue with the Ranger suspension. Sure, you'll get the look if you're a mall crawler, but you will not get performance out of that at all. I've reached out to a bunch of different companies. I was declined at every turn to showcase their solution or their claims on the Ranger Raptor. I was turned down, which is fine. That's their choice. Um, I see it as a good thing to promote their products on the Ranger Raptor on YouTube, show you guys, show thousands of Ranger Raptor customers a solution that may work. Uh, but yeah, I was knocked back, like I said. So CTB Performance, I've known Sam for a long, long time. I've known him for about, uh, about 12 years. So Sam has sent me his perch kit. We're down here at the Bosch Center at Tea Gardens and the guys are gonna help me get these fitted today. And we're gonna see if this is possibly a solution But she just clicked over 9,000 Ks, so and no issues so far, but my oil life says get a service. <laughs> so we've been pushing it pretty hard lately, testing all the components out we've been fitting to it. But that's what she's for. Amen to drive it soft. Just good to get an indication on how high the Raptor is now with 35s on it, and then how high it's gonna be once we fit the perch collars. So just a, a good indication for you guys to understand what we're actually doing, but and that we can actually show you the, the data on the screen. It's not just me making crazy claims about things. So, all right, so we've got the Raptor up on the hoist, and now we're just checking the ride height. Would there be a reason why the, there's there's differences there? Maybe in, a little bit in tire wear and cross ride height. Yeah, just as everything settles. Yeah. Okay. So um, you will get a variation. It's six mil between left and right, which is very minimal. Okay, yep, yeah, yep. Not to be majorly concerned at this stage. Yeah, front axle, rear axle. So now we'll fit the new perch collars and we'll see where we're at. So here we have the CTB perch kit. So we're just pulling out the first strut at the moment. And we're gonna be fitting these collars, these perch collars, to the bottom. So, give you a look at what we're doing. So obviously it gives you a full disassembly procedure to be able to take, take the strut out. What you've got to look for, gives you all the torque settings and stuff, spring compressor. So you got all the information here, the installation of the perch kit. So essentially, that's where it's gonna go there on the bottom side of where the coil sits towards the uh, live valve. So and that's gonna be our end result to lift the front up. 
without hindering any sort of other components in the suspension. So I fitted the laser lamps grill integration kit. If you haven't seen that video, it was just previous before this one. So go check that out if you like the light setup that I've got. It looks super clean, super factory. As you can see just there, I've got a full install video on those that I did the other day. So go check those things out. So with installing this kit, I really recommend getting a professional to, to fit it for you. It is pretty technical and the Raptors do have a lot of sensors and stuff, especially the ride position sensor just in there. Just stuff you don't want to break or mess with. So that's why the Raptor is so bloody good at doing what it does. So you got your Fox shock, you got your live valve, you got internal bypass, and that's why you can jump this thing, unlike a normal dual cab. Good old spring compressor. This one's on wheels, this one. Better than the ones from Super Cheap. Oh, yes. <laughs> Those ones take your fingers off. <laughs> There's been, uh, been many a times in the shed, me and the boys have been playing with spring compressors and almost died. <laughs> well essentially like we've just got instructions so we both haven't done this before so we're both doing it for the first time it's a new product from ctv so we're gonna experience it all together here so essentially we've got to remove the the wiring from the back of the collar just here and then we've got to hit this down apparently but we're going to read the instructions clips which must be on this side yeah so they're saying hit it down first and the next yep. step is to remove them so essentially the collar is going to sit in about this position yeah, yeah. just there yeah. seems like it's coming down pretty easy all right, so there's our bottom section of our strut. You can see all my beautiful dirt in there. So it blows me away. A lot of people say, that, oh, the Raptor's just a sticky kit and stuff. This is the reason why the Raptor can do what it can do. The amount of money, design, engineering, development that went into these shocks and to do what the Raptor can do is just absolutely unbelievable. Such a sick vehicle. Have we got that right? So we'll double check on the photos here. We'll try and copy the way they've got the shock position. So the notch is going to the upside of the shaft, yep. And it should be dead in line with this. And I guess that recess in the back of the... Yeah, do you want to show that? Thing? That section there, so this, this little machine section out to that machine section just there. Just clips straight in, so you can't really get them wrong. All you got to do is get them dead in line with the... Uh, the live valve here. So a little bit of Loctite on each one. And then this little groove here on the inside of this section will then go down and sit on this section just here. So essentially they'll go like that. I want to have it dead in line with the, uh, the live valve just there. So that way when the collar goes back in, it sits on there perfect. Make sure she's dead center. I'm just gonna sit, just sit like that. Well, that's 10 times better than any 
spring compressing experience I've ever had. <laughs> Great gear makes it easy. 100% it does. So sweet. Back in the car now. Righto, first side is done. On, everything fitted. We got the perch collar back in there and then put the wheel and everything back on so it's all buttoned up, ready to go now. We're just starting on the second side. So we're doing the second side. Pretty much same procedure to go through the second side. Just removing the strut. Pretty much exactly what we did the first time. There's nothing really different. So I'm gonna go through now, pull that out, get the second one fitted in and then we'll get it back onto the hoist. We'll check our ride height. So I was pushing the Raptor pretty hard the other day on the beach and you can see with the 35s I did scrub out. So obviously you had to I've got to you gotta remove some sections in here, the honeycomb section down in the back here to get 35s to fit. But you can see it does scrub. I did modify my mud flaps because I wanted to keep them on so that way mud and everything wasn't flying over the side of the car all the time, trying to minimize the rocks hitting just here and chipping the paint. But that was pushing it, that was that was pushing it pretty hard the other day. That damage there. It's not really damaged, but it's just kind of scuffed. It's ripped the top of these plugs off and then scuffed up there. So yes, 35s do hit when you go full compression, but interesting thing is gonna be with the new perch collars for the struts, if I do get that full compression now. I know we're just buttoning everything up right now, getting all the torque settings and everything done, get the Raptor back together. Ultimate test is gonna be this afternoon when I go home and we'll run it along the driveway and see how it actually performs and hopefully fingers crossed that we're on a winner here in the CTP performance perch kit gives us a bit of lift but doesn't compromise the ride of the Raptor. So once we're done talking up the wheels we're going to move it over to the four post hoist and then we're going to be checking all the alignment and everything make sure everything's still all aligned uh, any adjustments we need to make and then we'll also do the torque on the big bolts that are on the bottom of the struts so that way everything's good to go. Heaps more to come on the Raptor, so stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you like, subscribe. But we are definitely sitting higher in the front. We'll have to drive forward and hit the brakes and let us settle. And But it is looking a lot better. So it is noticeably sitting higher, as you can see the back end, the front end, compared to before. It's sitting pretty much dead level now. So before we had a toe reading of about 1.5 to 1.9. Yep. So it's really important you get a wheel alignment afterwards because now we're up at nearly 7 mil of toe. So that's our height increase now? Our height increase, yes. Okay. So we had 566, we're now gone up to 603. We had 572, we're gone to 593. All right, cool. And the rear hasn't changed too much. Yeah, so we've got a 40 mil increase in the front end. So again, with the Raptor suspension, you want to be really careful that you're not lifting the front end too much because depending on what research the boys at CTP have done, as long as that's still within the window of where the bypass ports are going to be inside the shock, then we should be right. But again, I'm going to have to real world test this thing this afternoon and we'll see where we're at and see if it actually is still performing how it should from factory. Okay, so Rod's going to do a wheel alignment and everything now on the car, just because we have we have increased the front of the ride height. So we're going to do a full wheel alignment and everything on the Raptor, so that way she's all sweet and the uh, Toyos aren't going to wear out. You're going to do this. You're going to launch it. 
<laughs> yeah, you better do it up tight for me. <laughs> I'm doing my tight for everybody. <laughs> Develop, development vehicles usually get. Oh, that is awesome. So the, the camber's bang on factory? Yep, bang on factory. 327, yep. 328 wear, light. Yep. Spot on. We'll adjust the toe shortly. We'll do the other camber caster on the left. Yep. And yeah, get cool. that spot on in right on the marks. Yep what we're looking for so yeah so with the perch kit you can get it all back to factory specs which is good but look at the mess that i've made under here greggy's sensor covers are doing their job look at all those stone impact marks along the front of that there and then also got his module protector up here but they have been taking some serious punishment, all those stone chips. So just protecting that, that sensor back there. Gotta be happy with that one. But if there's one thing you can tell from a bloke like Rod is how clean their workshops are. So if you look at this place, it's absolutely pristine. All these oils are nice and organized, very high quality workshop. And you can tell that your car's gonna get worked on correctly. It's gonna be good when it leaves here. Yeah, a workshop, someone's workshop or their shed explains everything about a person. Look, we do everything automotive, um, auto electrical, uh, air conditioning, mechanical, servicing new cars. Uh, it's truly a one-stop shop. Uh, we've been in business for over 30 years now. Um, we've got great staff. And yeah, look, we can work on all makes and models. So it's been super awesome to uh, do a, a different sort of project today yep, for you. Same old and it's, normal. yeah, it's, uh, it's been exciting. And um, I can't wait to hear the results of you uh, giving it what to this afternoon. Yeah, it's looking good so far with all the measurements. Um, it's done exactly what you wanted it to do, so the alignment's coming in spot on, so I'm sure it's going to be awesome. And we do all makes and models, and we can service and maintain cars without voiding manufacturer's warranty. So being a Bosch car service, we can offer nationwide warranty, um, and we're fully factory trained by Bosch Melbourne, so uh, it really gives us the knowledge that we need for these modern vehicles. Okay, so I've been driving the Raptor for about four or five days now with the... Uh with the perch kit installed, uh, I'm gonna give you my first impressions. It feels a little bit stiffer in the front, but obviously because we've compressed that front spring a bit more in the strut itself, so that's why I'm feeling feeling that. But it's it's bugger all. So I've been driving the driveway in and out pretty hard, pretty fast. Been using all the modes over the past few days, and it pretty much feels the same. The only thing, if there's anything that I've noticed, is yeah, it's slightly, ever so slightly stiffer in the front. But yeah, I guess maybe just the when I've been jumping it, I feel like the springs are unloading faster than what they were before. Obviously, because we've compressed that spring and it wants to release that energy a, a, a lot faster. So, but other than that, I'm pretty, I'm pretty damn happy with how it's how it's riding. The pistons are clearly still in the ride zone between the bypass ports, so we're not maxing out at one end. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty happy with with the result. It's, this isn't a very expensive modification, but if you guys want to get this for your Raptor, all the links will be in the description. What do I do every time we cover the road? Every time you decide to go on a jump and go really fast. <laughs> Bad dad. It's Father's Day, you can't yell at me. But anyway guys, I'm impressed with the mod. I think it's sick, it works great. Yeah, for those two things, feels a little bit stiffer in the front, and that spring just unloads a bit faster when you when you jump it. Other than that, I'm pretty happy. So I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Heaps coming on the Ranger Raptor. 
like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you later. See you.